Hi, today I'd like to share with you a little bit about Dragon and Tiger Qigong. Dragon and Tiger is a 1500 year old medical Qigong set with its roots both in Taoism and Buddhism. In China, it's been used to treat cancer and numerous other serious diseases, but it's an extremely versatile set with numerous medical and other health building applications. In this video, you're going to see a demonstration of its physical movements and a graphic animated representation of some of its energetic components. Now, these energetic components are most strongly activated by a coordinated regulation of your body, your breath, and your mind, which is required of all complete Qigong systems. For those of you who are relatively new to Qigong, this will give you um, a little glimpse into some of the inner workings of Dragon and Tiger and should help make clear that Qigong is not simply an alternative to conventional Western exercises, but is a multi-layered practice that can profoundly affect the health of the body in accordance with the principles of Chinese medicine. Please keep in mind that while these energetic representations are reasonably accurate, there are going to be a few minor discrepancies. Mainly that's because I'm not a videographer, I'm not a graphics designer, I'm not a film editor, so my production shortcomings are going to be pretty apparent. But also, some of the energetics of Dragon and Tiger don't lend themselves particularly well to graphic representation. So while this is definitely going to get you in the ballpark and will hope, hopefully open your eyes to some interesting possibilities, please don't take these representations too literally. The next thing to know is that whenever you see a split screen, the screen on the right will show you the basic unadorned Dragon and Tiger movement, while the screen on the left will provide additional information, either a side view or the related energetics. For those of you with Dragon and Tiger experience, there will also be reminders that should be helpful in your personal practice. This video is presented in two distinct segments. The first segment introduces all of the relevant energetic anatomy that's used in Dragon and Tiger. This includes things like the qua, the shoulders nest, the lower dantian, the middle dantian, which is also called the xin or the heart center, uh, the left, right, and central energy channels of the body, the dai mai, which is also called the belt vessel or the girdling vessel, and the qi body, which is sometimes called the energy body or the etheric body. These are aspects of energetic anatomy, energetic structures that are used in almost all Qigong systems and they're used in the practice of Taiji, Xinyi, Bagua, and other internal energy arts. It's a good idea if you're unfamiliar with these terms and unfamiliar with these structures to get acquainted with them now because it'll make your following the description of the Dragon and Tiger video a lot easier for you to follow. Um, the second segment of the video is the demonstration of Dragon and Tiger itself. Now I'm going to be demonstrating an abbreviated set and by that I mean I'm going to be doing six repetitions of each of the seven movements. Typically when one is practicing Dragon and Tiger after you've learned it, uh, 20 repetitions of each movement is normally what's practiced. We're keeping it shorter for the sake of this video. So now without further ado, let's take a look at Dragon and Tiger. The first energetic landmark is called the Qua. It's both an energetic structure that links the legs to the torso and a physical cavity deep within the inguinal fold. Among other things, it influences both the health of the immune system through its lymphatic connection and the health of the irogenital system. Similarly, the shoulder's nest is an energetic structure that links the arms to the torso and promotes lung health. It's also a body cavity that influences the immune system both through its lymphatic correspondences and through the energetics of the lungs. Together, the qua and shoulders nest form the four points which delineate the upper and lower ends of the side channels, two core energy channels within the torso. They should always be aligned to prevent unwanted spinal torsion in these moving practices. The side channels course through the arms, legs, and head transporting chi along specific pathways. They are primarily addressed in Dragon and Tiger movements 1 and 6. 
The lower Dantian is the primary energy center of the body, having to do with every aspect of physical health and functionality. It's where the qi is gathered and stored at the end of every qigong practice. The shin, or heart center, is also the middle Dantian. It influences emotional health and interpersonal relational energies, as well as the health of the physical heart. Both the lower and middle Dantian lie on the central channel, which courses through the torso, arms, legs, and head, transporting qi along specific pathways. The central channel is primarily addressed in Dragon and Tiger Movement 2, while the heart center is primarily addressed in Movement 4. The lower Dantian also lies along the trajectory of the Dai Mai, or belt vessel. The Dai Mai intersects all of the other vertical acupuncture meridians, as well as the kidneys and the Ming Mun, another energy center located at the back of the body between the kidneys. Because of these many intersections, its health benefits are numerous and far-reaching. The Dai Mai is addressed in Dragon and Tiger movements 3 and 5. The Qi body surrounds the physical body, the first of many subtle energy fields emanating from the physical body. It's typically found between 6 to 18 inches from the surface of the body and connects directly to the Qi within the body, including acupuncture meridian Qi. The hand movements of dragon and tiger are intended to be made at the perimeter of the Qi body in order to most strongly stimulate Qi flow within the body. Before beginning the actual dragon and tiger set, it's common to prepare by stirring the chi below your feet. This activates the chi and creates a gentle upward pressure that facilitates drawing the chi up in movement one. Movement one is the flagship of dragon and tiger. By moving chi through the side channels, it increases the functional energy of the lungs and liver, building chi throughout the body. The dragon is associated with the lungs, and the tiger is associated with the liver, giving this practice its name. There is a secondary benefit to the spleen and pancreas, mediated through the left channel. Movement one is the best dragon and tiger movement to provide substantial health benefits when practiced by itself, apart from the rest of the set. On the left screen, the arrows show the direction of induced chi flow and the trajectory it follows through the side channels. Remember that the hands move through the perimeter of the chi body, moving chi there, which communicates with and stimulates chi flow through the side channels within the body. Notice how the chi of the side channels moves well below the feet and passes through and influences the shoulders, nests, and qua. The fluid coordination of the contrary arm movements releases tension in the shoulders, neck, and upper back and increases communication between the hemispheres of the brain. Movement 2 helps to activate and open the central channel. The torso is turned up to 45 degrees to the left and then to the right by folding into the qua. In the side view, notice how the arm and leg flick straight out along the line that the torso is facing and not out to the sides of the body. This may be less apparent in the front view. Qi can become stuck or stagnant within the body for a variety of circumstances, causing any number of pathologies and degenerative changes. Number two is designed to discharge that stagnant energy. Notice that Qi is drawn up the leg and directed up the central channel through the Dantian, heart center, shoulders nest, and then through the arm to be discharged simultaneously out the hand and foot. Movement three builds chi in the kidneys and benefits the back, legs, and knees. In the side view, you can see a few important features. The left knee does not move forward on the bend nor rearward when rising from the bend. The back stays straight throughout and the hands remain at a constant distance from the body, whether at the belly, back, or leg. The right heel stays off the ground while all the body weight remains on the forward left leg.
Qi is pulled up the forward leg from the earth and is directed through the Kua to the Dantian. From there, it's guided around the Dai Mai. At the back of the body, it moves through the kidneys to the Ming Mun, an energy center on the spine between the kidneys. The Qi is then drawn forward to the Dantian, directed to the Kua, and is then pushed down the leg to the perimeter of the Qi body below the foot, where it once again contacts the Qi of the earth. Movement 4 benefits heart health on many levels and provides a secondary benefit to the lungs. In Chinese medicine, the heart houses the mind. This movement produces a clarity of consciousness and can promote a deep sense of compassion for all living things. Qi is drawn in from the environment, guided along the yin surface of the arm to the shoulder's nest and through to the heart center. It then continues through the opposite shoulder's nest and arm and is released out from the hand. After the chi is released, it's briefly held some distance from the hand until, much like a yo-yo, it's made to return and retrace the same pathway in the opposite direction. Similar to movement three, movement five benefits the kidneys but with one important difference. Movement 3 builds kidney qi, while movement 5 strongly discharges stagnant qi, clearing any pathogenic influence from the kidney. Beginning at the dantian, the hand circles the dai mai, continually pulling qi through to the kidney and ming mun, then pulling back to the dantian, where the fingertips touch before rapidly releasing the gathered qi downward. In movement 3, qi movement is kept smooth and evenly paced throughout. In movement 5, qi movement is still kept smooth but changes speed. The downward release and corresponding bounce back up to the dantian has to occur at a much more rapid pace, nearly instantaneously. Movement 6 can be thought of as a continuation of movement 1 since the side channels are addressed again and that pathway from the shoulder's nest down through to below the feet is identical. Here though, sword fingers are used to more tightly focus the chi induction and the entire side channel pathway is followed above the shoulder's nest, through the neck, head, and then above the chi body. This clears the sense organs and brain, clears the mind, and creates an interface between celestial chi and the upper perimeter of the chi body. While primarily a discharging movement, chi is brought into the body from both the earth and the heavens. Movement 7 contains aspects of movement 2, the torso turn and foot flick, and movement 6, the use of sword fingers to direct chi flows. Movement 7 is unique in Dragon and Tiger in that it does not trace any specific energy line. It diagonally crosses the left, right, and central channels, unifying all of the previous six movements. Along that diagonal trajectory, it passes through the shoulders, nest, and qua, it most strongly activates the Dantian by drawing Qi to and from it. This sets up a center to periphery, periphery to center pulsation, unlike any of the other previous movements. As in movement two, Qi is simultaneously projected from the flicking foot and hand. The Dantian is pretty charged up by the end of movement seven, and the next step, pulsing the Qi at the Dantian, amplifies it further to increase Qi storage capacity. Qi is stored in the Dantian, and along with the body and mind, it becomes quiet, 
still and peaceful to close this set. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and share it with anyone you think may enjoy or otherwise benefit from it. If you'd like to learn Dragon and Tiger Qigong, I'd strongly encourage you to find a qualified teacher. I teach regularly at Brookline Taiji in Brookline, Massachusetts and in other locations, but there are a lot of great Dragon and Tiger teachers all around the world, so you're likely to find one close to you. If you're interested in learning about Qigong in a more general way, please check out my Qigong vlogs. Um, they're on my YouTube channel, free to watch at any time, and they provide a lot of useful information that applies to all styles of Qigong. You might also enjoy my second book, Chinese Holistic Medicine in Your Daily Life, available on Amazon and in most quality bookstores worldwide. It contains two chapters on Qigong. The first chapter provides a lot of background information about Qigong, and the second chapter gives you detailed instruction in five simple Qigong practices, corresponding to each of the five elements, addressing each of the five major yin organs. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you a little farther down the road.